Mr. Jalen Walker, which occurred on June 27, 2022. As the Attorney General announced, the grand jury has come back with a no bill, meaning that none of the eight officers involved have been indicted on any criminal charges for their actions that night. Today, you will be hearing from three speakers, Akron Mayor Dan Morgan, Akron Police Chief Steve Milet, and Akron's Deputy Mayor for Public Safety, Clarence Tucker. We will allow for questions at the end of the presentation by each speaker. Please don't ask any questions at the end of their individual presentation, but we'll take questions at the end. We will not be able to answer questions related to any evidence or the incident itself, and we will direct those questions back to the Attorney General who handled the investigation. Lastly, we'd like to direct media and members of the public to our newly created website, akronupdates.com, akronupdates.com, for the most up-to-date information which will be available on this incident. We will have mental health resources, information on the grand jury process, frequently asked questions, press information, demonstration, zone information, and more on this website. We will also have the latest and most up-to-date information on road closures posted on this website. For the latest news, please refer to that website and share it with your friends and family. And again, that website is akronupdates.com. At this time, I'd like to welcome Akron Mayor Dan Horgan to the podium. Thank you, Lieutenant. Good evening. I want to thank all of you for being here today. Before I begin, uh, I want to say again my deepest condolences to the loved ones of Jalen Walker, his friends, his family, remain in my prayers and my thoughts. At the beginning of this process, I asked our community to do the hardest thing that I could ask them to do, and that was to be patient and allow the investigation to proceed. For nine long months, we've waited patiently and anxiously to learn more about this case. And today, we finally received some answers. First, let me thank Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost and the Bureau of Criminal Investigation for investigating the case I'd also like to thank the members of the grand jury for performing their civic duty. And while I know this may not be the outcome that some members of our community may have wanted, I want to reiterate that this investigation was handled completely independently. An outside agency undertook the investigation of Mr. Walker's death from beginning to end. From that point, a jury of Summit County residents was convened and presented with the evidence accumulated from the state's investigation and ultimately made a collective decision not to bring criminal charges against any of the officers involved in the Walker shooting. Now this is a change in process that our residents have asked for and was the first for our entire community. I want to ensure our residents and our community that this is not the end. In a few minutes, Chief Milet will discuss what happens next for the internal investigation in the Akron Police Department. But I want to emphasize that we will continue to talk with our residents our community organizations, our faith leaders, and our business owners, and beyond, about how we work together to create the Akron that all of us want. In the days ahead, we will challenge ourselves as a city, as a police department, and as a community to improve our structure in order to create a better outcome, a better outcome and belonging for all. And we have to look at the entire picture, not only of our policies and procedures, but also our tactics our communications, our systems, our services, and most importantly, our relationships, safety in our communities, and most importantly, police community relations. I will make the same ask of residents that I did back in July, which is to call for peace in our community. I would ask that during these times of tension and trauma, that you turn towards one another and not on each other. Akron is full of passion and energy, and when directed appropriately, it can be a catalyst for change, sustainable change in our community. And as you raise your voices and seek the change that you want to see, I would ask that you do so nonviolently. We will protect our citizens' right to assemble, demonstrate, and petition this government, but to do so peacefully. Let me thank all of those who have taken part in incredibly important dialogue. The conversations have not stopped, and the one thing that we've come to agree on is that no one wants outsiders coming to our city 
to capitalize on folks' trauma for their own agenda. We ask that outsiders with ill intentions stay where they are. Akron needs to process this latest news. There will come a time for healing in our community, but that cannot happen until there's a foundation of trust. Communication and coordination, and we know some of that is going to take time. I pledge to listen to you in the days and weeks to come and pledge that this city will work to keep everyone safe during any demonstration, and that means those protesting, bystanders, the traveling public, our police department, and beyond, and to our over 400 Akron police officers. I know you've gone through a lot in the last nine months, and there will continue to be difficult days ahead in our community as we process today's information. And I would ask that you remember that call to service, which you have answered in the absolute highest calling, and it requires the absolute best of you. I know our police department wants to serve the residents of Akron, and they want to protect everyone in this city. As our community begins to process this next step, my prayers remain with the Walker family and all of Jalen's friends and our community at large. There will be many more conversation in the days and weeks ahead, but at this time I'd like to invite Chief Milet to the podium to discuss the internal investigation which will occur. Chief. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I want to start by acknowledging the loss of Jalen Walker and the impact the shooting has had on so many people. It is truly a tragedy. I know many people have been affected by his loss, no more so than the Walker family, the Akron community, and every member of this police department, the Akron Police Department. My wife and I are keeping the Walker family and everyone impacted by this tragedy in our thoughts and prayers and I would respectfully and humbly ask each of you to do the same. Following last year's shooting, I immediately contacted the Attorney General's office and asked if they would handle this investigation independent of the Akron Police Department. They said they would. As a result of us walling ourselves off from the investigation, neither the Mayor's office nor the Police Department has had any knowledge of the findings of that investigation. Moving forward, BCI, will be the primary agency to work all critical incidents involving our employees. I'd like to echo Mayor Horgan's sentiments of thanks and appreciation for Attorney General Yost, the Special Prosecutor, the Bureau of Criminal Investigations, and the citizens who served on the Special Grand Jury. The Grand Jury's decision in this case indica indicates that when presented with all the facts and evidence, video and testimony available, the jurors ultimately determined that our officers did not commit a crime when they encountered Mr. Walker. In no way does that take away from the tra tragedy of June 27th and the loss of such a young life. I firmly believe that no Akron police officer in the course of their duties wants to discharge their firearm at another human being and resulting in the loss of life. Any time that happens, it's a tragic day for our community and the Akron Police Department. As advised by the Law Department, we will not be releasing the involved officers' names as the threats made against them are still believed to be active, viable, and credible. For their safety and the safety of their families, we will not release their identities. The officers involved in the shooting will remain on administrative duties for the foreseeable future. The Akron Police Department will now begin an internal investigation and review of the June 27th shooting. This internal review includes, but is not limited to, a comprehensive examination of the entire incident to include an examination of training and instruction, police procedures, adherence to those procedures, supervisory decisions, and tactical judgment. Once the internal review is complete, I will use the findings to determine if any policies or procedures were violated by any officer or if any policy, procedure, or tactic should be modified. At the conclusion of the internal investigation, the report will be provided to the police auditor for review. Given the magnitude of this incident, the results of the internal investigation will be made available to the public at its conclusion. In addition to the internal investigation and our change in policy regarding outside independent investigations into officer-involved critical incidents like this, we've also updated our training surrounding handcuffing suspects. That practice now encompasses removal of handcuffs 
when an officer determines a threat is no longer present. We've also begun reviewing our pursuit policy to ensure our policy aligns with current best practices in policing. To support our residents' right to peacefully assemble, the city has set up a demonstration zone outside of City Hall and in front of the police department in downtown Akron. South High Street is blocked off from East Bowery Street to State Street to allow for demonstrations to safely occur and for those assembled to occupy the street if they so choose. That space will be open for seven days and is available for anyone who wishes to use it for peaceful civil demonstrations. The space will be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and will have barriers on either side to ensure no car traffic can pass through. This is meant to provide the public with a safe area to assemble and protest. Those assembled will not have to worry about car traffic in the area, and should there be any kind of counter-protest, our officers will be there to ensure for everyone's safety. Having said that, it is important to note that we will not tolerate nor will we condone violence, destruction of property, or placing any person in danger during any protest or assembly. Again, I would urge peace and nonviolence here in Akron. We will be available in the days and weeks to come to listen to our residents to make sure that we provide space for their thoughts, to their concerns, and their ideas. But destroying our city, assaulting off others, and to include police officers is not an option. Before I conclude, I want to take a moment to acknowledge our Akron police officers and non-sworn staff who have faced incredible pressure and scrutiny over the past nine months. The men and women of the APD have all been impacted by this event. Many of them have been threatened, and in some cases, their families have also been threatened. No one wanted this outcome. No one. Not the family and friends of Jalen Walker, not the people of Akron, and certainly not the members of the Akron Police Department, including the eight officers involved in the shooting. No one wins. It's a loss for everyone. Having said that, we have a lot of work to do to find a path forward because in the end, we need each other. Where trust has been lost or fractured, we will work hard to earn it back. We know that everyone impacted by this tragic event is still hurting and that today's events are a flashpoint. Tensions are high and as a community, we must choose a path forward. We can choose a path towards healing but we can choose a path towards destruction. My sincere prayer and hope is that we choose a path of healing. At this time, I'd like to welcome Deputy Mayor for Public Safety, Clarence Tucker, to the podium. Thank you, Chief, and good afternoon, everyone. This moment is one that our city and community have been preparing for since this case was turned over to the Attorney General last June. The conversations with our community partners have been ongoing and have centered around several key points, including how we promote peace and healing in our community, how we create the necessary communications channels between the city government and the residents we serve, and how we keep everyone safe as we work through the days and weeks to come. Looking at the process itself, advocates for reform have petitioned this city for years to hand these types of officer-involved incidents over to an independent investigation. And that's exactly what Chief Marlette did. Akron has taken many such steps in the last several years to create more equitable, a, a more equitable city, including our most recent one officially seating the first ever Citizens Police Oversight Board in our city. But as we all know, these steps are not enough. As we work through the re and review our systems, services, and relationships described by Mayor Horgan, we ask everyone to commit their energy to shaping the city we all want, a city of peace, a city of hope, a city of equity and opportunity for all. 
We need to leverage this time of engagement and energy in our city and our nation to address economic and racial gaps in education, health, wealth, opportunity, and safety. And while the work ahead is hard, I know that our community will rise to the occasion as they always have before. We can all agree that we want peace in this community. And this city and our community members have been working together for quite some time now to build up relationships, understanding and trust. We will lean on these relationships in the, future, in the days ahead as we have the difficult conversations needed to create real healing in our community. The loss of Jalen Walker was a tragedy for our, our entire community, and my heart goes out to his family and friends. I ask our residents to give them space and respect. No parent should have to lose their child. We all help to bring down tensions. We can all help to bring down tensions in this community by giving each other respect and grace in this moment. And at this point in time, I'll turn it back over to Lieutenant Mark. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Tucker. At this time, we're going to begin our Q&A portion of the press conference. A couple housekeeping rules I ask you to please, please consider. We're going to ask and allow for one question initially from every media outlet in the room. We ask that you please be considered and not double your questions up so that each and every person has an opportunity to ask at least one question and where time permits, we may consider additional questions. When you begin, ask that you uh, raise your hand please, state the media outlet that you are from and who your question is directed to, that's very important. The gentleman will be standing behind me and we want to give time to uh, move the microphone and allow uh, them to speak. So again, raise your hand, identify yourself, the agency that you're with, and who the question is directed to. Uh, we're going to start on my left, your right, um, here in a second to begin that process. Young lady in the back. So it's, it's beginning now. Um, time frame wise for completion, I, I, I don't have an answer for that. We're going to take as much time as we need to. Um, we just got the investigative report as everybody else did when they were watching um, the Attorney General's press conference. There's a lot of information to go through. Um, and that investigation is going to help inform our internal investigation. So just as soon as it's done, we'll make it public. So I don't there is a somewhat of a distrust from some of the public saying that those names are not being made available to them. And part of the reason is because they feel like they can't look to see if there is any prior history in their record to find out if they have any incidents. Can you elaborate a little bit more, any more consideration of, of whether that will be rethought at any point of releasing those names? I understand the concern from the public. I do. Um, I come from a generation of police executive where when an officer is involved in a critical incident, not only does their name go out, so does their picture. In this particular case, we have chosen not to do that based on advice that we got from the law department, and it's centered on the threats that have been made against our officers. My primary responsibility as chief of police in this city is to ensure for the safety and security of everyone that calls Akron home and the public that tra travels through it. But I'm also responsible for the safety and welfare of our employees. 
Akron's police officers. And over the last several months, there have been numerous threats that have been made against officers. And for that reason, we will not be releasing their identities. Caitlin McCarthy with Channel 19 News. From what you know about the AG's investigation, do you expect any of the officers, any of the eight officers, will face discipline or termination? So our investigation hasn't even started yet because we're just now getting access to an investigation that we were walled off from. We chose to wall ourselves off from. So it's going to take a while to go through all that information. Um, and at the end of the investigation, I will look at the officer's actions and to ensure that they comply with our policies. Anyone? Uh, yes, yes, please. Um, uh, Amelia Sykes today called for a possible DOJ. Oh, sorry. Jennifer from Johnson Pamela from the Beacon Journal. Okay. Um, Amelia Sykes today put out a call for a Department of Justice to launch an investigation into practices in the Akron Police Department. Um, either the mayor or the police chief, either of you able to respond to that? Sure. Um, I, as, as I understand it, there have been multiple inquiries made to both DOJ and the FBI about starting an active investigation, and we would obviously cooperate with any investigation within the federal department, uh, we'll cooperate with any investigation into the Akron Police Department. Back on the left side, you're right. Any questions on this side before we... I guess the concern about what happened there's general calls for peace and calm from community leaders and business owners and religious leaders and from all of you. But how do you prevent that? I mean, what, what can you do when you're walking that fine line of letting them demonstrate and things getting out of control when you face so much scrutiny the last time and now we have a no bill? So how do you balance that? So we have been very, very deliberate over the last several weeks couple of months to communicate information out to the public. We've been meeting with community groups, community leaders, again, with the same message, asking for nonviolence. This is our city. We live here. After any outside agitators come in or whatever, we still have to live here. So we will respect everyone's constitutional right. If it turns violent, then we have a duty and responsibility to this community to ensure that it stops. Mayor, do you want to Yeah, I, I would just add, too, I think the Chief is pretty succinct in, in the destruction of property, intimidating people from going places. Um, and, and that was one of the reasons on, uh, you know, in setting up a zone. Certainly, the protection of that right is, is geographical, too. I mean, they, they don't have to choose to go to the demonstration zone. But we will protect that right where they, you know, where they want to petition and demonstrate and let their voices be heard. We're, we are listening. Do we agree with everything all the time? Probably not. Um, but it is also asking for, you know, don't break windows. Don't do those things that we saw. You know, there's a significant amount of damage to some businesses. There's a responsibility there, too. Um, you can choose to not break a window, too. And I largely believe that there's not a lot of people. I, I know there's a lot of people that want peace in Akron, and they're asking for the same thing. But I also want to be able to express their view and say, listen, we think this is wrong, or and they want to show that, and, I, and we're more than happy to accommodate that as it, as it goes on. So, And if I may also add one last thing, Bob. As the mayor said, you know, that this is this is our hope, that it will be nonviolent. But it's just not the city of Akron that's asking for this and calling for this. As you pointed out, members of this community, across the spectrum of this community, are echoing the same request. Uh, Melissa Reed from Fox State, but actually this is for the mayor. You talked about looking at the bigger picture and police community relations. What groups have you or plan to reach out to, and what kind of activities or plans do you have concerning that? The, the, it, it goes back long before June 27th, too. It, it, it has to do with you know how you invest in public space, how do you build better relationships in the community, how do you invest in neighborhoods, how do you put more money towards you know youth opportunity, all of those things. Um, I think someone made a, a comment earlier about a, the culmination of things. It's just not one thing that we're trying to do. Building a better relationship, it, number one, it's every day. It's just not the police department. It's all of the city of Akron. And how do you do that every day? You have to be able to go and see people where they are. I don't think you can do it over Zoom. I don't think you can do it on a policy directive. You have to go meet with people. You have to hear their concerns. Are you going to agree with everything all the time? Absolutely not. But I think once they see that there are people on both sides, I think you see a better understanding of that. That's a daily thing that we have to do moving forward. 
And that's the recommendation for every city department and for anybody that wants to build a better and stronger community. Um, Jennifer from the Weekly Journal. Uh, so the mayor or the chief, have either of you reached out to the Walker family today? And if not, do you plan to do so? I have not. Again, we just got word that the attorney general was going to do a press conference, that the grand jury had made a decision. We have not uh, made any sort of contact. I would welcome the opportunity to speak to Mrs. Walker and the Walker family, but I'm going to respect their right to in make that invitation. Um, but as of right now, no. I, I, I echo the same sentence, Chief. Any other questions before we close? Um, can, you mentioned the Civilian uh, Review Board. Can you talk about the role, if any, of what that will have in the internal investigation or how that that piece being there now is going to change that investigative process? I, I certainly would agree that there is a role, and I would refer any of those questions to, their, to the chair of the Community Police Oversight Board, uh, Kent Boyd, um, to be able to answer some of those. It's just starting, too. They've just gotten seated, and there's, there's a process to go through. But there's more than likely a role, and I, I know that the Akron Police Department has worked pretty closely in developing those relationships, too, with the board and what that role would be. And there's also some charter language about how that all works. Okay, so any other tidbits, questions? This will be the last question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Anna Huffman from Ideal Stream Public Media. When it comes to the police responding to any of the protests, um, would there be any instance where the police would use force, or what is the kind of response to protests? So in the event that we experience violence during a protest, people throwing rocks, bricks, smashing windows, or assaulting other people, or assaulting officers, we will declare that assembly an unlawful assembly. And we will give people the opportunity to leave the protest area. We will be using our tools to communicate that information out to the crowd effectively. We will give them a period of time, we'll make multiple, uh, give multiple warnings. We will tell the public where they can leave and the egress to the area. At that point, our hope is that everybody would comply. If people continue to engage in violent behavior, then we'll use the tools and resources at our disposal to have people leave the area safely. Where arrests needs to be made, we will make those arrests. But my, again, our sincere hope is that we're not going to experience that this time. Okay. Well, that concludes our press conference. I want to thank everyone for coming, taking the time to come out. Uh, as we mentioned, the AkronUpdates.com will be a place where you can find additional updates. As the Attorney General mentioned, they'll have information by now, I'm sure, on their website in terms of all the investigative findings and reports, uh, video and other documents related to their investigation. Again, it's not uncommon, unfortunately, that um, sometimes subsequent questions will come in after a press conference. Again, if any of those questions are related to the specifics of the findings, the evidence, or the report, we respectfully will refer those questions back to the Attorney General. So at this time, that concludes our press conference, and I thank everyone for coming. Be careful. You live? Thank you very much. Okay. They have a bike for you. Yeah, they already pulled it for us. Yeah, they did in the house. It was just like a walk and talk. Just like they summarized what they talked about. Um, I think you need to. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just